Right, hello everybody and, and welcome to the first module on our Ultimate Exam Technique Programme. This is brilliant and thank you for joining in this live session. If you are watching it being recorded, just enjoy it as well. You can At least you can stop and pause and rewind and everything like that, so it's all good. So yes, just wanted to first of all say welcome and thank you. And secondly, we've got a little list of things. Um, yeah. I'm hoping that this will help most year 11s structure their uh, revision. So the idea is that each week, we, each one of us, me, Becky and Sarah, will cover one module of the syllabus. We are following AQA because it is the most common one, but the content will be the same for Edexcel, OCR, but they just do it in different orders. So um, you're still going through it. You're still practicing those exam questions and how to apply Lots of students struggle with that. So what we want to provide is sort of helpful hints and um, sort of show you as well how to answer the exam questions, looking at the command words, um, pointing out really common things that will always get asked, those keywords that are essential, but also looking at how exam questions different from foundation to um, higher combined science and then also separates as well. And I'm also going to be linking in, or we're all going to be linking in, um, videos for the required practicals. Required practicals are about 20% of the content. They are important. You cannot ignore them. Okay. So I will include, or we will include exam questions on required practicals and a link to watch the required practical being done. This is really important because having that visually visually watching it is, is important. And they're about 10 minutes long, something like that, depending on the complexity of the required practical. Um, let me just check where to, yeah. Um, with regard to questions, make sure, maybe you have pen and paper, you can write down your question as you go. And then when I finish recording and I press that button, um, you're more than welcome to type the message in, or if you do have a question, put your hand up and I can, so we can just fire away and just, you can ask different questions then. Okay. But whilst it's recording, just sit back, relax, enjoy, make notes if you want. That's absolutely fine. Right. Let me just check anything else. <laughs> yeah. Just enjoy and take notes. That's my one. Um, that's fine. Um, if you're watching this being recorded, if you've got questions, all you need to do is just email, okay? And then uh, we will reply. Right, so first slide, module one cells. I have put a link to the syllabuses here. So if you want to have a look and have a look through them, then that's your opportunity there, okay? So if it's actually gonna allow me to click, here we go. I thought I'd start with just going over what, the exams are about so for separates and for combined your you've got six six papers in all for science okay um for the biology one two papers it's really nice with aqa because they split the modules um paper one is one to four modules and paper two is like five to seven hour and 15 for combined for both of them and hour and 45 for separates okay and they're yeah, um, combines out of 70 and then uh, separates out of 100. Um, with combined, you are you get an average grade. So they will take the scores from all of yours and then average them out and that will create your grade. OK, um, I don't think there was much more on that. So I've just added that as extra interest. So let's start. Oh, I might just move my little screen because you might not be able to see that. Um, let's start, let's move me down there, um, with the beginning basically, probably a couple of years ago you did cell structure, um, I have sort of put pictures on here about the syllabus and what you have to know about eukaryotic cells, prokaryotic cells, animal and plant cells, also cell specialization and cell differentiation, all big words here. Um, but also you have your first required practical here, and that is on magnification. So all your microscope work and things like that. So I have put a video link there for you to watch that. Okay. Um, 
it is critical. My my big thing here, if you want to do anything additional with um, cell structure, is to create a table of differences and similarities between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells with examples like use animal plant and bacteria algae and list as they've said hang on i'm gonna put my little pen work in here um as i you know these are particular structures that you need to know about and then in for plants as well um so you need to also know the differences between animal and plants, like what the three things that plants have that animal cells don't have. So that's your chloroplast, your permanent vacuole there, and cell wall, okay, cell wall, which is made of cellulose, okay. This, this whole module, apart from one section, is relevant to everything, to everybody, okay, combined and separate. So just everyone's got to listen to this bit, okay. Um, with my recommendation for cell specialization, always they will always want you to link structure to function. Okay, there are some examples, obviously, that we're going to go through. That's nine times out of 10 what they'll ask. Okay, and then differentiation, you need to know about stem cells um, um, and yeah, how it differentiates those key words as well. We're going to highlight undifferentiated, differentiated. They're really important to include in your answers. So we're going to go through some typical questions. We're going to start with foundation. A lot of the foundation questions are just drawing, um, drawing lines, linking or matching words to pictures. Not much written content, but there is still written content. But a lot of it is is linking. So if we have a little example here, is it? Oh, it's still writing good. Animal, bacteria, and plant, they want you to um, show that you know the difference between them. So if you Google animal cells and plant cells on Google, which is always important, um, and a good revealing thing, have a look at what they typically look like. Because you might also, in uh, an exam question, get images of actual micros um, images from microscopes. And being familiar with what they look like is really important. So for example here, your animal cell, nice straight line, please use a ruler. I know it sounds silly, but use a ruler. Um, sometimes you get people like to do that and, and plant cells like that. And when it comes to the examiner, they're like, oh my goodness, what is going on here? Nice, neat line. And, and if you get it wrong, if you use a pencil, Okay, initially, maybe, yeah, you can rub it out. But when you start going, oh, no, it's not that, and start making it really messy, it's, it, it could cost you marks, okay? So my helpful hint here is make sure, if use a pencil if you're not sure, um, but also use a ruler. Make it really nice and neat and really easy for the examiner to see, okay? Uh, so that's my helpful hint for that one, uh, that style of question. Um, sorry, that was actually correct as well. I, I scribbled that out, but I don't want you thinking that. How do I get that? See, that's where I need it. I need to erase that because oh, that looks too messy and that just upsets me. Um, so back to a nice straight line to that. Okay. So that's that's how you would answer those. Um, white blood cell. So this is another example. If you have a white blood cell, you know that that's an animal. Be aware of your examples of animal and plant cells really helpful when it comes to um again identifying and knowing what what the answer is basically so what is structure a so here it's between these two and a lot of the time students do get those muddled up so just remember that the animal cells only have a cell membrane and remember with the plant if you get another line on the outside, the it's the outside line that is the wall, okay? Like a brick wall, it's the outside of a house, brick wall, that's how you remember it. And that is for plants because plants don't have a skeleton. Therefore, if they don't have cell walls, they can't produce that structure. So that's what the point is for a cell wall. So in this case, we recognize white blood cells and animal cell. And therefore, it won't have a cell wall. 
but we do know it has a cell membrane and that's what letter A is referring to. So give your box at one tick. It says tick one box, always check how many boxes to tick because sometimes when it says two and you've only ticked one, you, you will easily lose marks. Okay, so it's double checking those questions. If you've answered it, go back over it and just check that you properly answered it in the correct way. Um, again, this is another example of a line, but I've put this one in because here, cell, I'm going to read it. Cells contain structures. These structures have different functions. It says draw one line from each function to the correct structure. Now, I see lots of students uh, in their answers to right, contains genetic information. Where is this one down here? Nucleus controls what enters and leaves the cell. That is your oh, uh, and hang on, what what uh, doesn't actually say? So this will be your cell membrane where photosynthesis happens. That's in your chloroplasts. Okay, so remembering what each of the cell structures do is really important. Now, lots of students panic because they see this. They say, oh no, one's not been answered. Oh, I must, there's got to be one, one's got two. And then they, they do that. No, you, you've answered it. You'd actually, that is wrong. And that could therefore cause you to have only two marks because they've asked you here one line from each. So you've actually, you could have got all three, but by doing two lines out of one box, you've lost that mark. Okay, so it's really important to carefully read the question. And I see this quite often. Okay. Um, yes, specialized cells, muscle cells, this is going foundation, give one function of muscle cells. As I said before, they always want to link the structure of cells to um, the function. So again, summarizing all the different types of cells, identifying the common features of those cells and their function is a really good way to revise this because that is what they'll be asking. So give one, one function of muscle cells, it's only one, and that is for contraction. That's all they do, contract. And you can see that they're nice and smooth, a bit of physics there, we are not talking physics today. Um, less friction, nice and smooth so they can contract. And that's that's all they want for that, that answer. Um, and please don't write like contract. What contracts? The, the bus going down the road? Who knows? When you're answering a question like this, if you write a single word answer, you may not get the mark, okay? Write it in a sentence. The function of muscle cells is to contract, done, okay? Don't assume, big, big thing, don't ever assume that the examiner knows exactly what you're talking about by just writing contracts, okay? Just be careful. You might get the mark. You absolutely you might still get the mark, but to make sure you definitely get the mark, write in full sentences and assume that the examiner or think that the examiner is really thick and they know nothing about what they're what the question's about. Okay. That is really, really important. So just spit it out, just to say it how it is, even if you think this is ridiculous. I can't believe I'm even writing this. Do it. You'll be surprised where the marks are. <laughs> so, and then 1.5, explain how muscle cells are adapted to their function. And you get questions like this. Use figure one. Okay. Another thing, diagrams are not there just to look pretty, okay? They are there to guide you and help you answer the question. So look at figure one. The only thing labeled is mitochondria. So it's your word association here. If you see mitochondria, I'm going to, you can note this down, put it on a post-it note, stick them on your wall, your word associations. Mitochondria. It is where you, the cell gets its energy. It gets that through respiration. Please learn your respiration and photosynthesis equations. Helpful hint there. Um, and quite often, 
linked to active transport. Okay, really important. The more mitochondria, the more active that cell is. Just link those words together. Never forget them. Okay, so explain how muscle cells are adapted. They have lots of mitochondria providing energy for the cell so that the cells can contract. Done. Okay. Uh, right, we've got some examples here. Combined higher. I'll try and speed up a bit, but lots of lots of things going on here. Um, when you get to sort of a higher level for combined, you might get longer things. And this is where there's a lot of comparison questions for this module. Okay. So we're looking at 4.1, and I will provide as many, well, there'll be mark schemes for all of the, the questions as we go forward. So cells are the basic units of all life form. Describe four differences between bacteria and plant. Now, before you start writing, because it's a four marker, take a few, 30 seconds or so to brainstorm, annotate. So you've got to think of all the things a bacteria cell has compared to a plant. So annotate around the question, brainstorm for a while. And then when you've found the four differences, then you can start writing. Don't go straight into it. Give yourself that those few seconds to brainstorm. And then it's a lot easier to write the answer after that. So here I've given, there's a whole list here. There. Think about size. Think not only about size, but structure. What's in a bacteria cell that's not in a plant cell? What's in a plant cell that's not in a bacteria cell? Um, yeah, think about your genetics level. There's bacteria, there's no nucleus. There's also no mitochondria. I thought I saw that somewhere. One of the answers. Yeah, no mitochondria. So that's really important to remember for bacteria cells. They, they don't have a nucleus. They don't have mitochondria. That They don't have membrane-bound organelles. Can't say that really quickly. <laughs> um, plasmids, they have plasmids, which are your single little... Um, circles of extra DNA, um, cell walls are different. Both have a cell wall, but plant cells will have um, cellulose. Okay, it's made out of cellulose. But I also want to talk about, oh, there's a lot of it, the ignore thing. So if you talk about chlorophyll of plants and um, that that's different, it, it, it's not some bacteria and algae have chlorophyll so you, you can't use that one um and now and now and now that's all okay so yeah the allow ones are suitable but have a look here at the typical the strong answers that the the examiner wants think about the size think about the typical structures cell wall and there you go right um 4.3 here again another example where you're comparing so providing and, and, and building that table for your revision on bacteria, plant and animal cells is critical. That's all you need to revise because you can use these mark schemes as well to identify the differences as well and use these mark schemes to fill in that table. So bacteria and eukaryotic, that's your animal cells, animal and plant cells. So I understand the difference between pro and eukaryotic as well. Um, the main ones here, yeah, again, no nucleus, has plasmids, and it's smaller. Never forget the fact that they vary in size. And there's another question coming up for separates that uh, um, uh, involves that. Involves that. Um, look out for this one. Ignore bacteria cells do not have chloroplasts. Okay, some do. Uh, yeah, 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 allow, allow, allow. These are all allow ones, so that's all good. But again, use these mark schemes to create your comparison table. Um, even in combined, you're going to get uh, oh, that's two there. Um, drawing ones again. Remember to use a ruler with a nice straight line. Be make sure you definitely know your answer. Use pencil if you're not. Um, and this is another typical SALA question 1.2, where there are lots of things are labelled. Again, recognising it's a plant cell and knowing the different parts is really, really important. So here's a tick box. Hang on, if we go back, 
there's a lot of tick boxes so sometimes you can actually narrow down your ideas or your answer by just looking if you know one of them so a and it's like yeah i know a that's a that's a permanent vacuole so if you know a there you go i know that's a vacuole and also for structure a there's two of them so quite often the answer will always like you can narrow it down by 50 percent by looking at just one of the columns so now you've got a 50 percent chance so b is it a mitochondria, which is one of the largest organelles, or is it a ribosome, which is normally a dot? It's definitely that. And C is the outside one, that's a C the cell wall. So again, just tick that box there. Okay. So use the multiple choice and eliminate what's definitely not the right answer. And that will increase your chances of getting the answer correct. And again, tick one box. Always check how many boxes you have to tick. Separates for this sort of topic here, it's always like a six marker or something a bit more extended. So when it comes to six markers, it's really important to definitely know your command words. And we're going to talk more about command words as we go through. So red blood cells are specialized animal cells. So here you need to know you need to know about your red blood cell. Command word is compare the structure of red blood cells and the structure of a plant cell. So here I would, you've got six minutes. I would spend at least one minute brainstorming. So there might also be pictures here, but compare means in this case, um, similarities and also differences. So what you have to do, I would, talk about this uh, which one has a cell wall which one has a cell membrane uh ribosomes um things like that um list as many sort of structures as you can and then at the top oh oh hang on sorry i've lost my lost my pen and then at the top put your red blood cell and your plant for example and tick 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 cross Brainstorm as many things as you can remember about red blood cells, the structure. It is only about structure and as many things you remember about the plant cells. So have like your vacuole and things like that. So from that, you can then write your brilliant six marker. OK, and maybe you can put the paragraph similarities first and then differences afterwards or however you feel comfortable writing it. With six markers, the, this is only 11, one on two. The examiner has to think, right, relevant. For, so, yeah, the examiner is given this district description to allocate marks. So he will, they, they will give a level one uh, if relevant features are identified and differences noted. But then they will give four to six marks if scientifically relevant features um, way in which they're similar and difference are made and the magnitude of the similarity differences is noted. So here you can actually create now using this a model answer to this question and bank it and use it for revision. But again, these are the things that the examiners are looking for. So it's again, there's another fact here. Red blood cells are the only ones without a, a nucleus. Only uh, animal cells without a nucleus, obviously similar to bacteria. Um, plant cells do. Cell wall, shape, a biconcave shape, whereas there's lots of different shapes of plant cells. Um, contains hemoglobin for red blood cells, whereas plant cells don't, and so on. There's, there's a whole list there, again. But then your similarities, <laughs> they have cytoplasm, cell membrane, and pigments, although they are different. Red blood cells are red, that's, that's um, a pigment. Um, no references to mitochondria and ribosomes. I suppose it's to do with structure. Level two, consideration of both red blood cells and plant cells is required. So you, if you're only, in your answer, only talk about one of them, you can't get higher than a level one. So the maximum you'll get is three marks. When it has a compare, that command word compare, you need to talk about both of them. OK, and spend that minute brainstorming first, annotating any diagram, etc. 
Okay. Um, I think that's my helpful hint here then. So a few more on separates. Um, as I was saying, diagrams, they're really important. Remember with diagrams, the examiner has put things on that diagram for a reason. Okay, they haven't just gone, oh, that's a pretty diagram. They want you to look at those diagrams and be able to use that information in your answer. So don't ignore a diagram, a table, a graph, or anything. Take your time to, to read through, look at a graph, for example, look at the trends, etc., and get yourself familiar with what the examiner has given you first. Then go on to the answer. No, go ahead and go on to the question, sorry. So 3.1, give two similarities between prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Again, it's the same question, but this time with a figure there, you must use what is in front of you. Okay, so use this as a helpful hint. So you're prokaryotic, eukaryotic are these two. Okay, so use what's in front of you. And again, I've given, given the mark scheme there. And then give three differences between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So here they've given you like a structure, but here one, two, three. if they don't, you can number them. Do one, two, three. Then you'll make sure that you're um, getting the three marks. Always check the number of marks you, you will be given, especially with separates, because quite often with separates that you know it is there's a lot of writing to do in your answer. So you need to know how much writing. And by checking the number of marks, you can you you will know roughly how many points to make or how many sentences because those marks have been you know you know how many marks. So the difference is again I've I've um, given you the mark scheme there, very similar to what we've previously covered in the combined science one, um, but this time you have to write it. There's no sort of like joining of boxes etc or listing. It's a for separates, it's very much, you've got to do more writing, you've got to write in full sentences. That is a, a critical difference between separates and combined. Okay. Um, I don't need to go into too much detail there because we've done quite a bit on that already. Um, I'm, I'm going to leave this, you you can read that. There's, again, this is more separate ones. I'm not going to elaborate on these two, but what I want to focus on is this one, 1.3. Drawing for separates, quite often you might be asked to draw something that has been down the microscope. This is your image. Um, science is not an art lesson. There are ways to draw um, images, um, and it, it is is different to an art. Okay, we you don't need to bring colouring pencils. You just need a sharp pencil please bring a sharp pencil. It just stresses me out thinking about it. Um, sharp pencil and transparent ruler. But when you do some drawing, you've got to, look at me doing this. This is not very good. It's not very good when you're doing a pen. Single lines. If, I, if we see like feathering, things like that. No, no feathering. Okay. Um, they, they have to be, nice lines like that so there's that and that's pretty much it really there's only two marks look at that number of marks two and they're asking you to draw a simple diagram well couldn't be more simpler than that could it and label two parts of the cell right well what can i see what is that what is that anyway there you go that that that's your your, your basics there okay name one structure found in plants that not found in animals i'm yeah, the mark scheme is there. Okay, again, it's the same content asked in different ways. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point out how to draw. Again, it's not an art lesson. Please don't feather. Just nice, simple, straight lines. Well, not dead straight, but you know, I leave it like that. Maths. Okay, microscope work and questions. Um, know how to answer. I know this is, I, I, I pester people with, with physics with this but you get equations in biology and chemistry as well and I've put a few examples here but what I want to elaborate on is 
how to lay out answers when it comes to formulas. So here, for example, we've got four marks. Actually, I've got the, I didn't have the mark scheme there, but um, yeah, when it comes to microscopes, there will always be a calculation nine times out of 10. Know how to convert your units as well. No, you must always measure, please always measure in millimeters. Okay, so for example, with those questions with an image and they nine times out of 10 tell you wh where to measure to and from, always calculate in millimeters and know your conversion. So to for millimeters to nanometers, there's always a, it's always a thousand. Just always have that in your head. It's a thousand, okay, times or divide. Okay, if you use centimeters, that, that mucks up that thousand thing. So ignore centimeters, always millimeters. Brilliant. Um, so the root hair is viewed 50. The length, the image length of the root is 43. Calculate the real length of the root. This question, they haven't given you the equation. So it is something you have to know for combined foundation, you'll probably nine times out of ten, you'll be given them. So one of those marks or is an escape method, right? E, S, and then C, okay? E means equation. So you have to write the equation. So here, we actually got it on here. Please write it out in full. Don't just do M and I and that, just in case. Image, oh dear, that's supposed to be an I, over image, over actual. So, out of those four marks, you'll get one for that. Uh, calculate the real length. So we now need to rearrange it. So we need to rearrange it. So we got actual equals your image over your magnification. Okay, you'll get a mark for that. And then we need to substitute. So if you haven't used all of the data in your question, something's gone wrong. But luckily here, it should be okay. So times by 50 is your... Um, magnification so that's just a 50 and your image um image length of the root x to y is 43 millimeters um so you just substitute in there substitute in there um so you'll get a mark for that write your answer which is your calculate but for calculate, you need to always check what units. That's critically where that fourth mark is going to come from, okay? So we need to convert the millimetres to micrometres, okay? So it's really, really, really important. Actually, I've put nanometres there, so um, it should be micrometres. But that is where you're going to get your fourth mark. Your number of marks tells you how many... Steps there are, you'll typically get one mark for each of those <clears throat> levels there. So if it's four marks, you know full well there's another, there's something else, like maybe rearranging the equation or changing the units to match so they're all the correct ones. Or again, with this one, changing the answer to make sure it's in the right format, like three significant figures, standard form, etc. Okay. But there's a few other ones there to practice as well. And that they've even given you here, which is very kind of them. They tell you how many millimeters to a micrometer, etc. cetera. Um, uh, required practical, more required practicals. It's easy to view the cells using the lower power objective lens first. When it comes to a microscope question, this is where your video for your required practical is really important. You need to be able to describe or uh, yeah describe how to focus your um, microscope or yeah and how to view something and then how to focus or zoom in further. Helpful hint here: remember in the eyepiece you've got a magnification there as well as your objective lens. So remember that in your calculations, but have a standard step-by-step -step instruction on how to focus a microscope and also look at all these lovely labels here include those in your answers again I cannot emphasize enough there's images if you're given an image that's labeled those labels need to be in your answer there's a reason why those labels are there 
put them in your answer. So this is one whole question up to 3.8. Uh, root hairs are, where was it? Um, it's easy to view in cells uh, using low, if one reason why, just because you can see a bigger, I think got answers. Yeah, I have got the answers on this one. Yeah, got what, um, a wider field of view. God, wish I, <laughs> I'm getting tongue tied there. Um, but yeah, I've got to focus the image. The objective lens should be moved away from the stage. That's important as well for your microscope required practical. Always start with the stage all the way up at the top and then you work back down because it could damage your objective lens as well. Or the slide could smash that. Um, uh, let's have a little look at these ones. You've got a maths one there. Root hair cells do not contain chloroplast. That is a very common question. Root hair cells do not contain chloroplast. So only one mark, but it's all because they're underground. There's no light there. What's the point? So that is why that question gets asked a lot. And this is another typical one, which we're just saying 5.2. Describe how to use a microscope to observe a prepared slide of root hair cells at a magnification of times 50. So you'll get an image like this, and you must, for four marks, talk about every single piece of labeling going on in that image. Okay. Or to revise, have a four or five points on the step-by-step -step instruction on how to use a microscope and how to focus it. It's, it's yeah, that's all they are requiring. Um, and then the cells shown in figure two were viewed using a light microscope, give two advantages. With this, there's two words. When you're comparing light and electron microscope, only two words are needed. They, could, they want you to talk about the magnification, and then the resolution, okay? Electron microscopes have a much higher magnification and resolution. We're able to see a lot more in detail. And another question very similar to this, uh, what has been uh, an advancement in technology and, and discovery is because the electron microscope enables us to zoom in a lot more and we're able to see and learn a lot more from the electron microscope. But however, it's very expensive. It needs its own room and a team of experts to run it. Whereas a light microscope, very cheap, you can keep it in the cupboard and we can all use one, okay? So there are similarities and differences. So have a little summary of the main similarities and differences in, in the between the light and the electron microscope as well, okay? Very simple, keep it simple. Separate. Um, I've added these two and I've got the mark schemes there. More examples of where images are really important. They don't just give you an image for the fun of it. Here they're asking for two pieces of lab equipment. You've got one, you've got two. Just go with those. That, that's fine. And then you've got uh, there, you've got the stain. Go for it. Um, really, I'm saying it's an example of what the examiner is actually. It, it's, they're giving you stuff. They're giving you the answer. They're giving you the helpful hints. They're not trying to trick you at all. Okay. Uh, this one here, I quite like this one. Student observed slides of onion cells using a microscope. Um, what's gone wrong, basically? This is the whole question here. Uh, they're not. They're not clear. This one's out of focus and this one's just, just not zoomed in enough. So as I said before, have a look as well. Look on Google for images of animal and plant cells. Know what they look like. Know what are good images, what are bad images. And, and away you go. So here's another example. Describe how the student should adjust the microscope to see how cells, again, they're asking you how to use a microscope. That's all it is. And it's like literally only two marks. So it's just two steps. Have I got the mark? Yes, I've got the mark scheme there. Um, and that's all about turning the objective lens. Okay. And these words here, describe, describe, they're your command words. They're just describing. They're literally, the examiner wants you to 
tell them what you see. That's it. So you need to be able to look at the image and go, right, I can only use that image. What can I see? How can I describe it? It's not why. There's no scientific thing, right? The describe words is writing down what you see. Done. Okay, nothing else. No, no more complications than that. Right, combined science people, you can just switch off for two minutes. Okay, separates, so you have in this module uh, an extra required practical on microbiology. Okay, there was a link there. Um, I'm go going to just go through some examples of exam questions. I'm sure you've seen these Petri dish images before. Um, my helpful hints with this is your maths. Know how to work out your uh, area of a circle. See in question 2.3 is all about the area of a circle. And I've given you the mark scheme there. You need to know. You need to be aware. Again, look, look at all the little labels. Use, use what's been labeled in your answers. OK. And with these sort of questions, it's really important to write that. OK, these are where does it say? Um, yeah, antibiotics. So they're putting antibiotics onto the bacteria. So this link will link in with a, a, a module you'll do in the future where we talk about antibiotics, and antibiotic resistance. Use the word kill. That's what the examiner wants you to tell them, basically. So this white circle here is where the bacteria has been killed. <laughs> yeah, just add kill to the sentence. That's all fine. Um, they will always ask as well about your sterilizing techniques. So be aware of those. Have a, For example, you must always have your... Um, uh, you must have a, a sterile environment, everything wiped down. Your agar plates will, should be sterile. Um, you will have, uh, what else? yeah, when putting the bacteria or the antibiotic um, container on the agar, you must lift up the lid, but near a flame to burn off any unwanted or contaminating bacteria. Um, everything needs to be sterilized. Okay, this is. There's a lot of things that you can list to help sterilize. And this is when they use your yeah, aseptic te techniques means sterile techniques, basically. How do you make sure no other bacteria is growing on there apart from the one you're looking at? Even like wash hands. Oh, hang on, it says no, ignore wash hands. Don't need to do that with that particular question. Okay. Um, I think the other thing they might they ask is why at 25 degrees? That's because at 37, when it should grow more naturally, that's your body temperature. Now, you're in a class of 30 students growing things at 37 degrees, lots of bacteria there. A class of 30 students is not very hygienic, and they'll probably lift the lid off and all the bacteria will come out, blah, blah, blah. It could cause infections and spreading and things like that. So... In school, they're only incubated at 25 degrees because it's for health and safety issues. Okay. Um, I've added here yet yeah, another part of this required practical. They will ask for surface area, um, area of the circle to be calculated. So know your pi r squared. Okay. They're my main helpful hints for your oh, there they go. Um, required practical for this instant. So cell division. <sighs> right, cell division, <sighs> chromosomes, genetics, DNA. Um, know where know the difference between a gene, a chromosome, uh, a nucleus, where, where your DNA is found. Um yeah, and cell. So yeah, they 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 do test you on the location of a gene, what is a gene, what is a chromosome, etc. So know the differences, lovely little diagrams there. With AQA, you are quite lucky because with mitosis, you only need to know three stages. So that's your um, 
interphase mitosis and um, cytokinesis. Okay. EDX cell, you need to know PMAT in the mitosis. So that's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Sorry about that. But if you do biology A-level, you'll be a head start anyway. So with mitosis, you might want to actually compare it to meiosis when you're revising because they it's, it's very good to revise them both together. But for this module, we'll just talk about mitosis and cell cycle. And I'm going to just whiz through some examples of the typical subject matter for these sort of questions. Quite often you'll get a the, the cell cycle in a, in a circle, stage one, two, three. Um, what percent is it going to say about the different stages? Um, yeah, they, they, they do sometimes like to put a bit of mass in, in there. So this is testing your understanding of what's happening in stage one, two, and three. So stage one is when everything is doubling, doubling up, okay? Then mitosis, that's when it splits. And then stage three is when you end up with your, your two new cells, two daughter cells, okay? That's your cytokinesis, okay? So you need to understand what's happening with the DNA. That is the critical bit here. So here it's asking the mass of DNA is six pic picograms. Um, a picogram is 10 to the minus three nanograms. So knowing your standard form and your, what does minus three mean, blah, blah, blah. You need to be aware of that. Um, because here they're asking, convert it, the, the, the mean, and then and put it into standard form. And that's only for one mark. So there's a lot to do on that one, just to get one mark. One marks do come across, you think, oh yeah, they're really easy but they can be quite tricky. If you don't write the right word for them, you've lost it, you lost that mark. So this is why I say write in full sentences, think of the examiner being really thick, making sure um, you, you definitely get that mark because it's really important not to just be blase with the one marker. So you know, it's only one marker. They, they can be really tricky. Um, Another style of question for cell cycle, um, it, they could talk about how long it takes for a cell cycle. So all of that could be um, 15 hours. How many hours the cell spent in mitosis? Look, they saw a bit of maths here. Oh dear. Three significant figures. Uh, when you're reading through a question, highlight the important bit. So you've got to calculate how many hours spent in mitosis. Give your answer to three significant figures check the number of marks okay so here is 28 degrees out of 360 you work out that proportion so if 360 is 15 hours oh actually have they got the did i put the mark schemes on it i did um and you can work it out from there always always again it it's not necessarily the escape method e s c here but it's the same principles Whenever you ask, uh, been asked to do a math question or what calculating something, always, always check what format the answer needs to be in. Just do it as a natural thing. Go right, just double check. I, I, otherwise, I'm just going to write 1.666. That is never asked for. Okay, never go more than two decimal places in an answer. Okay, um, and just yeah, just check. It could be they are asking standard form. I'm like, but. If they don't specify, never go more than two decimal places. Um, have I? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, I'll have to. Oh, no, I've got the writing over the top as well. Right. OK, I, I'm going to keep the writing on there because I don't want to lose that because uh, obviously when people uh, can go back and um, have a look at it afterwards. It's all going to be there. But 6.5 is a five marker. OK. Here we have our command word, describe what happens in each of the three stages of the cell cycle. I'm just going to go back. When you get a five marker or six marker and you've got an image, annotate. See, I've already started to annotate. So you think, right, five marks. Where am I going to get those marks? I'm going to, well, there's three marks already from just talking about stage one, two, and three. But obviously there's an extra two marks somewhere where there's, they want a bit more, and probably in this case, it will be the mitosis or side of things. Um, so 
link your marks to where possibly that might, you know, where your um, marks might be. And I've put the mark scheme here. And again, separate into three paragraphs. Stage one, this is where everything duplicates, increase in number of organelles and increase in size of it, of the cell. Stage two is where actual mitosis occurs, a splitting of the um, nucleus. Um, and in stage three, oh, stage three, cy cytokinesis, always, I don't know why, always um, talk about the cytoplasm and the cell membrane, like splitting and separating, okay? Cytoplasm, cell membrane, always, always don't, I, I, I don't know why, just, just remember. Okay, AQA, love that. 3.4, name the type of cell division that produces genetically identical body cells for growth and repair. People, students get confused between mitosis and meiosis. When, the key thing to remember, when it is mitosis, it's all about growth and repair. It's always about body cells, okay? When it's about meiosis, it's only talking about gametes, your egg and your sperm, and it's, that's it. So remember, meiosis is only to do with gametes. It's everything else is mitosis. Okay, so as soon as like the eggs, uh, the sperm and egg are fused, then it's mitosis, all to do with growth and repair. Okay, the only time meiosis happens is when you're producing gametes. That's it. Okay, and again, create that little summary table of how many cells produce, haploid, diploid. Just a comparison between mitosis, meiosis. They are the key things that will always be asked when comparing mitosis and meiosis. Okay. And you can find just Google mitosis versus meiosis table and you'll get answers straight up there. Right. Nearing the end, stem cells. Key words here. Again, foundation, a lot of tick boxes. Again, lots of. Um, oh, hang on. Okay, 5.2, 5.3. Just showing examples here. No, it's, it's your knowledge. You need to know um, about, um, well, everyone needs to know the same content, but we need, don't let picograms confuse you. It's the principle that body cells divide and duplicate, et cetera. So it's in mount. Um, so just two advantages, therapeutic cloning. Now in this style of question, You've got to think of advantages and then two disadvantages. So you will need your outside knowledge, but you will you've been given a lot of information here. Use this information first. Okay, so the embryo produced contains the same genetic information as the patient. So no rejection. I'm gonna put it on here. Um uh, research we've done to use it. I'm just gonna do look through this the long-term effects of using embryonic stem cells in patients are not well understood so that would be a disadvantage annotate your your text here so let's sorry let's start with being stem cells from human embryos can differentiate into most types of animal cells so that is good that is an advantage so it can be used in any medical purpose research is done being done into the use of embryonic stem cells in medical treatment so that is an advantage we are, uh, are developing that's all good this one was a disadvantage. In therapeutic cloning, human embryos are produced using a donated human egg cell and a cell from the patient. The embryo produced contains the same genetic information as the patient. That is an advantage because it stops the uh, rejection. And then stem cells are taken from the embryo and stimulated to divide to form cells the patient needs. Here you've got your eth ethical thing. You're taking an embryo. You're taking a possible human being and just taking the cells. That's it. So there's a lot of ethical side things. Um, embryos then destroyed. Again, a little bit funny, you know, um, that, that's your, your disadvantage there. Disadvantage. Okay. <laughs> Again, annotate, read through the text really carefully, especially with foundation. You know, you you want two and two of each. So even if you get one and one, that's fine. But the, the answers are in that text. And where some answers might need a little bit more 
from your knowledge, try and put the uh, create the answers uh, or get the answers from the text given. Read through it once, twice, annotate. Is that an advantage or disadvantage? Don't know. Okay, but obviously I put the mark scheme there. It's just all about sort of technique for your exam thing. Separate. Okay, again, you've got therapeutic cloning, um, the uses of stem cells, but this time you still got tick boxes, things like that, but you have to, there's far less information given to you. So for example, in this one, the foundation you, is written out for you, for you separates, you have just given a diagram. There's a lot more expected of you to remember. Okay. Um, but again, use the diagram to annotate. Okay. And make sure thinking about your word association keywords. Whenever you talk about stem cells, oh, I saw it, where is it? Use the key word, or maybe it was in the mark scheme. Yes. Undifferentiated. If you don't use the word undifferentiated in step for stem cells, embryonic or adult stem cells, or actually adult stem cells are partially uh, differentiated, but embryonic stem cells, they are undifferentiated. They become anything. So quite often, very often, that is what AQA want you to write. Okay, so again, it's another word association. Stem cells undifferentiated. Good. Um, but yeah, again, not going to go over all that because we kind of did that with the other one. But all the mark schemes are there with also there's four, four marks there. Again, another uh, list of advantages and disadvantages. This transport <laughs> module one is such a big module, isn't it? Transport in cells, diffusion, right. Out of everything for diffusion, the critical bits you need to remember is about gas um, or solution. It's a liquid or a gas. And these things down here, you just, I'm sorry, but just you have to, it's that one of those word associations. You must always talk about the, the large surface area. This is um, these are um, ways that cells or processes have adapted to in, improve upon the diffusion rate. Okay, so structures need to have a large surface area. The larger the surface area, the more diffusion. There has to be a short diffusion pathway. So the gases don't have to go that far, or the liquids don't have to go that far. So think about digestion and in your lungs, these are the critical bits and in the leaf structure. These, these are the three areas that you will be asked about. Um, needs to have a good blood supply, but relate that to it. it needs to have a good transport system. Once it's diffused across, it needs to go, it needs to go somewhere else. So it's blood for um, us, but also like your xylem phloem, your transport system in your plants as well. So it, that needs to be close by as well for efficient diffusion. Um, the other one, which is actually up here, a large concentration difference. Okay, the bigger the difference in concentration, the faster it will diffuse. If it reaches equilibrium, osmosis practical, coming up, um, there's no diffusion, no no osmosis, no nothing like that because it's equal. So the bigger the difference, the better. And knowing how the plant and the um, animal keeps that dif difference is important. For example, with your lungs, it keeps um, the difference because the blood is constantly moving, taking away the oxygen, keeping it at a low concentration. In the lungs, it's always high because you're inhaling um, the oxygen. So there we go. So it's maintaining that uh, large concentration difference. So I know they talk about temperature as well. Um, humans are just one temperature. So that's, that's different. That's more chemistry. I always put that down as chemistry. But whenever you get a question on diffusion, these are the four things you need to just hang on, focus your answer on. I've got to move my bar. Uh, think, oh, I went, I just made the part in there, hang on. 
one, two, three, um, and four there. Those four things, you must remember, put them on a post-it note in your room, on a post-it, I don't care. That's what you've got to remember, okay? Um, osmosis and active transport are the other two ways of moving. Just remember diffusion and osmosis are the same thing. They're both going from high to low, okay? No energy required, they are passive, okay? But diffusion is to do with gas and liquid. Osmosis is to do with water. And that's it. OK, whereas active transport and I'm summarizing this in a very brief, brief bit is low to high, but it does require energy. So therefore it's active, active. So it needs energy. Word association, respiration, mitochondria, blah, 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 energy. Know your equation again. Word association, put it on a post-it note. These are the to, you know words that you need to remember that will be vital in any answer that you have on this topic okay the other helpful hint with these know your examples so for example with diffusion you're talking about co2 and oxygen in both plants and animals in the lungs all that sort of thing osmosis you are it's they like to talk about red blood cells and how they burst Whereas in plant cells, they don't. Um, osmosis is when you, you've got your water coming into the root hair cell. That's your other example. And then for active transport, that's your mineral ions coming in your root hair cell. But also your glucose right at the end of your small intestine. When the concentration in your intestine is really low, um, but in your blood, it's higher. So we have to actively move the glucose in that way. So you need to know your typical examples because that's what you'll be tested on. Um, you've got the osmosis required practical, which I'm going to talk about as well. There's critical bits there. Foundation, here's some examples, um, as well as um, separates as well all linked to diffusion with foundation. It's more like one, one word answers, which is lovely. Um, give one use of the sugar. This is important, 6.8. No, what, why do we have glucose? Why do plants have glucose? No, get, print one off on from Google. Um, the uses of uh, glucose in um, just in the plant. And it's not only respiration, it's to make amino acids, it's to make cell walls, et cetera. So definitely know that. But if you can't remember all of those, it, it's just one, one mark. So always remember it's for respiration, for energy, for like processes to occur. And um, I remember this question coming up because um, students come out of the exam and go, no, we've never, never learned about um, axol axolotl at all. What, what is that? What is that? With uh, your combined separates and things, they like to throw in examples or just, yeah, examples of things you haven't seen or talked about before. But you've got to remember, it's like, right, they're only going to test me on the things that I have been taught. doesn't matter what the actual thing is. I need to just think, right, what have I learned that will help me answer this question? I don't know anything about this animal, but that doesn't matter. It's, it's the, the, the textbook information I need to remember. So here, it's four marks. Explain, so why, um, they might die in water with a low concentration of oxygen. Look, they've given you gills as an, a labelled example. So you think low oxygen, what's going to happen? We're talking about a gas here, so it must be diffusion going from low, sorry, going high to low. OK, so if it's in a low concentration of O2, there's not going to be any diffusion into the animal and therefore the animal is going to die, basically. It's got nothing to do with the animal. It's to do with the low concentration of oxygen. And looking at the diagram, what have they got labelled? Look at the gills. You've got a nice big surface area there. Might be relevant, etc. So don't panic when you see something like that. It's not, not worth it. It's fine. You know the stuff. OK, 
Um, as I said before, they do like red blood cells when it comes to osmosis in humans. Um, know why plant cells don't burst, and that is your cell wall. Okay. I don't know why I wrote it out when the answer's there, but anyway. Um, yeah, water enters by osmosis or diffusion. They're allowing you to write diffusion there, but it is osmosis. So be careful when know your difference between osmosis and diffusion in, in those examples. Okay. I think that was mainly all of it. And there's more examples here where diffusion um, and active transport occurs. And as I said, if you know your examples, like if you typically get a root hair cell, um, and it will typically be about active transport, um, mineral ions, and they're often linked, which is not in this module, but with your transpiration and things like that, and xylem and phloem and things like that. So again, word association, I have again put all the mark schemes up here, but again, these are separate examples, but they, you know, the, the content you'll need to know for foundation as well. I uh, put all that there. And they're just examples where those critical AQA examples are, are being, te oh, they're testing you basically. Uh, I'm not going to elaborate too much on there. There's more examples here. Get familiar with all the different specialized cells. Know about the phloem and xylem as well. Make sure you don't ignore them. Um, explain why sick tubes are specialized for their function. As I said, all specialized cells, all the questions will link. Why is it shaped like that? And what's its function? So you've got to think, right, what does that cell do? And how has that structure helped it, basically? So again, if you've written that table out, comparing the structure and the function of each, it's literally just copy and paste it in. And, you know, know that phloem needs those sieves to allow movement of substances up and down two-way system in the flow room. Okay. Um, let me just move myself across because then I can't see the question. What does the structure of a companion cell suggest about the processes that move dissolved sugars through the flow room? You've got to remember the flow room, that's not often talked about, but this area here is not only cell wall membrane, but it's got very minimal, hang on, look, it's actually, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong bit. This bit here, that's the cytoplasm of the cell. Hang on, is that? Oh, I'm ch checking out the diagram here. Um, but what I'm saying is the cytoplasm of a phloem cell is very minimal. You cannot fit a large mitochondrial or nucleus in that cytoplasm. It's pushed right to the sides, so it will allow the two-way traffic. Therefore, the phloem hasn't got any organelles in there to provide it with energy etc so it needs its little friend its companion cell to be next to it to then pass all the energy the glucose and things like that when you do a level biology you'll learn a lot more about this um but yeah it needs that it, it can't survive without a companion cell to provide it with the the energy that it needs and the resources okay uh yeah and that is your example where it needs active transport in plants. Okay, again, know your examples. That is what's going to be tested. Describe why it's important that dissolved sugars are moved both upwards and downwards in the plant. Roots and shoots, wherever there's growth, it's going to need the sugars. Okay, it needs the sugar for respiration, for energy to provide energy for growth in your cell division which is again covered in this module you'll probably get a whole bunch of questions like talking about cell division and everything all linked together um but yeah that's another typical example that's um combined lastly lastly i'm going to show you two examples now this is your com combined as um foundation and higher but then this is your separates. It's exactly the same, but I've just put them both on there. But I'm going to only going to go through this one. Okay. Your required practical on osmosis. Watch the recording of it. Very, very important. But what I want to do is nitpick about the typical things that students go wrong with this question. 
Okay. The first bit, um, they, uh, well, again, it's knowing your, okay, I'm going to do a couple of bits. With any practical, you must know need to know your independent dependent variable. Now, this can be easy because what you've got to remember is your independent goes on your X, your dependent goes on your uh, your Y. Actually, that's, so that's D for dependent. Okay, that's really important to remember. Um, the whole point of this practical is to find out the concentration of sugar in, in a cell. And to do that, what you're plotting on that graph is the change in mass because there's been movement of water in and out of the cell. Okay. When there's no movement, i.e. they are at uh, equilibrium, they are of the same concentration inside the cell as well as in the water. There's no movement of water. Well, there is still movement, but it's it's equal. It's at equilibrium. So therefore, the mass of that potato will not change. Okay, that's the principle. That's what we're finding out. And to find that out, we need to draw a graph with our data like this. And the critical bit, again, require practical, practical skills, which you'll see in one of my um, sessions, um, extra sessions. I want to go concentrate on this. Oh, that's terrible. Please don't draw one like that. Always use a pencil, sharp pencil. Thank you. What they want you to find out after plotting the graph is this point here. Where does it cross that X axis? That is the concentration of the cell or a predicted concentration of the cell. That's really, really important. Um, is that the way where they put it? Okay, the mass of the potato doesn't change yet. Yeah. yeah, determine the concentration of sugar solution inside the potato cell. So that goes there. Okay, that's what this practical is all about. And understanding that osmosis doesn't happen when they're equal, both sides. Okay, so there's no um, movement in and out. The other bit is your percentage change in mass. Right, you've got to remember uh, change mass and start. Yeah, change mass. What they're giving you here? Give you three. Um, nine times out of ten, you'll be given a table of results, and there might be, for example, one missing. So when you get things like that, hang on, let me just see. No, they've put one in there. Um, so that one might be missing. Students get confused with knowing the formula on how to work out the percentage change. Um, and it is literally, as they've just said here in this, in this equation here, I'm just going to take the mark schemes away because it's a bit messy, is the change in mass. But you've got to know how to work out the change in mass. And that is your final minus initial. OK, over your initial. If you don't know that, you can't remember, you think it's initial minus final. And you've got one a value missing and you need to work that out you have got one two three four five other examples of that data or that calculation there you've got to play around with that and find out well how did they get that answer they've got these two i know it's a change so it's either one minus two or two minus one divided by one use what you've been given to help work it out if you're in a panic and you have a um, silly moment and you can't remember blanking out that sort of thing things are there to help you basically okay um careful of this as well give your answer to three significant figures that often comes up but the main bit on here is that they always ask is for you to plot the graph make sure your points are really accurate with the sharp pencil Know that where it crosses the x-axis is the concentration they want because there's no osmosis occurring. And so they might even test you on the method. They will often ask, uh, where is it? Uh, we call the method. Oh, they didn't do it on this one. Uh, they'll often ask why, when you take the potato out of the test tube, why do you wipe the excess water off? And it's because there's you don't want to weigh that. That's not actually part of the potato, so you need to weigh it. Uh, take it off and then weigh it they're the I think they're the main bits on this practical that are critical to know and all I've done I've put in a separate one there as well 
just to show you they're asking the same thing. It's not so structured um, and you need to, yeah, just be a bit more uh, forthwith. See, they don't give you the equation. So there's things you need to know more than the combined one. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, just a few more answers there. So I think that's it. It is a big module and I do apologise for waffling on. OK, but there is a lot there for you to take on board. Lots of word associations, lots of helpful hints with specific topics, revision tables to design, perhaps. Um, I've given here hints, look up content not familiar with. You've got Cognito that I highly recommend videos on there. You might have a GCSE pod from your school. BBC Bite Size is good as well if you're visual learner print off pictures that sort of thing um if you need any other further advice on it please just email my email is there okay but this is when i ask if there's any questions basically but you're all going ah oh, thank goodness don't you waffle I have waffled. I am so sorry. It's an hour and 20 minutes. That's really a long time. I'm so sorry. Well, I'm going to stop now, though. Thank you.